You're in a conversation or maybe a diversity training session at work and the topic turns to systemic racism and someone asks, are we all racist? What would you say? Introspection is very important. Christians especially are led by scripture with the assistance of the Holy Spirit to assess our words and deeds and even our hearts and our motives. Today, it's not uncommon for accusations of racism to be weaponized in order to silence those who disagree with certain points of view. There's no shortage of books and videos instructing people about their fragility and shared guilt, offering unbiblical formulas to become allegedly anti-racist. Often the self-proclaimed anti-racist movement can be itself racist, making stereotypical assumptions about entire groups of people. Racism is a sin. And the solution to racism is only found in the one who rescues, redeems, and reforms us. When asking ourselves if we are racist, we must be open to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Every person is made in the image and likeness of God, and we should repent any time that we fail to treat anyone as the valuable image bearer they are. But that doesn't mean we should assume that we are racist by default. The next time someone says that most people or all people of a particular group are racist, remember these three things. Number one, many accusations of racism today are in fact prejudgments. Just because someone throws out a label doesn't mean it is legitimate. Many accusations of racism lack a clear definition of what racism is. Think about it this way. If someone said that all women are anti-male feminists, would that be a fair accusation? Many women hold feminist views, but that doesn't make them anti-male. And many women don't hold feminist views at all. This accusation against an entire group of people would be unfair and inaccurate, like saying that just because many sports fans drink alcohol, all sports fans are alcoholics. And just because some best-selling authors who profit from leveling these accusations label entire groups of people as racist doesn't mean it is true. It's not uncommon for these authors to also accuse critics of fragility whenever their dogma is questioned. But the truth is every human being is fragile and prone to sin, no matter the hue of our skin. No one group of people holds a monopoly on racism. Racism is the sin of prejudgment. Today's surge of pious anti-racism often promotes racist assumptions about people solely based on the color of their skin to combat the alleged racism it claims it wants to eradicate. Which brings up the second point. Number two, not all calls for racial justice come from the same worldview. Christians should be champions of racial justice because of what the Bible teaches about who we are and what gives every human value. The anti-racist movement is built on critical race theory. Essentially, critical race theory teaches that there are two groups of people, the oppressed, which would include people of my complexion, and the oppressors, who are always white. The oppressors are always wrong and the oppressed are always right, not because of what they do, but because of the group they belong to. This victimhood narrative creates a false moral hierarchy that is unbiblical. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All means all. White supremacy, black supremacy, or any other form of racism are real and grave evils. Blaming entire groups of people for all of society's ills fails to truly and critically look at problems. It will not help us arrive at real answers. This worldview only perpetuates the dangerous and corrupting us versus them dichotomy that plagues our culture which leads to the third point. Number three, we can only truly confront evils in our society if we tell the truth. Understanding what is true and what isn't true about racism can be difficult. For example, many media and academic elites claim that America hasn't changed since 1619. This type of hyperbole and exaggeration make it difficult to discern what is true and what isn't. We can't let everything and everyone calling themselves anti-racist determine the narrative about race or fool us into believing that entire groups of people are racist by default or that their actual goal is to end racism. We must also hear and amplify other voices, voices of faith and reason who rely on biblical truths instead of cultural trends. Racism does exist, but the next time someone asks if we are all racist, Remember these three things. Number one, 
Many accusations of racism today are, in fact, prejudgments. Number two, not all calls for racial justice come from the same worldview. And number three, we can only truly confront evils in our society if we tell the truth. For What Would You Say? I'm Ryan Bomberger. If you're interested in learning more about caring for the victims of injustice and working to address social evils, check out Thaddeus Williams's book, Confronting Injustice Without Compromising Truth. <laughs>